Okay, so um, let's start uh, uh, for today. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Hope you are well. Um, we are very delighted to launch of the arts portal. Uh, most of you have been using this portal, and and I'm sure you will be really pleased to know our best updates. So my name is Dr. Nasim Nakwi. I'm the editor in chief of the JBBA. Uh, I have uh, with us uh, with me Kochal, who is the uh, co-founder of uh, Artifacts and also co-founder of Orchid, which is one of the largest digital ID database research now with over. 7 million uh, unique scholar IDs. And we also have with us Emma Bossert, who is the engagement at Artifacts. So um, I'm, in the next five minutes, I'm going to um, give you a quick overview of why we need blockchain for research. And then Dave and Emma will take you through the, the, the JBB Artifacts portal and take your questions in the end. So using blockchain for research uh, materials is not a new concept. Many papers and books have been written. There's been a few experiments in the recent past at uh, designing such platforms to use the power of DLT to manage these outputs. And I'm quite interested uh, and been following very closely this space for quite some time now. And for me, uh, and I think there are five important applications, considerations uh, for me as an author. Firstly, the provenance. Now this uh, proof of existence, time stamping, hashing, proof of record, proof of creation, ownership, whatever you call it. Bottom line is that we uh, benefit from the use of blockchain um, uh, thanks to some very special properties of it, especially the, the immutable time stamping of uh, creative uh, content and intellectual property and research outputs on the blockchain. And the evidence that I've created this set of uh, set data uh, on, on at least, you know, on or after such and such date. So uh, a lot of money is spent every year, $1.3 trillion, according to some estimates each year to fund about uh, 8 million scientists to produce 2 million research papers. And these are pretty significant numbers, ask me, and I, and I believe blockchain will play a very major role in this ecosystem in future. Uh, Secondly, citations. Now, they talk about it in a minute, but traditionally, citations usually refer to a uh, reference to published work. And uh, uh, I would also like to, uh, people to start citing my other work, which is especially the pre-published data, better data material for uh, uh, it, it is finally published in a journal. And mm -hmm. ideally, I would like to do that in a way that my, uh, my property is firstly secured somewhere, ideally on a blockchain, so anyone can verify my proof existence, uh, my research existence. Thirdly, uh, community. So it would be great if a, this tool uh, manages to um, uh, allow me to join an already existing community, whether it's a university society where I have already published my work, such as the JBBA, and I'm already familiar with their workflows and their SPs, etc. I would like to ideally collaborate on research projects with others who are also part of the system and already using that system. So I think that that community concept is very important. The next important uh, point and important consideration for me is the, the is the accessibility and control. And I want to use a system that ideally has uh, uh, some functionalities and capabilities to integrate with the existing flow systems, such as ORCID, where I can create um, uh, uh, accounts using my existing um, or IDs and also to be in full control of what what I do and what I do not do you know when I share my uh, stuff with others so maybe there are some projects but some projects I want to share only within the community with certain researchers and there are some that I want to make public so I, I want that is smooth 
just drag and drop an article and bam, it's done. Finally, as a, as a researcher, I would like users don't have to pay a huge amount of fee uh, and ideally uh, a, a free portal for me as a researcher, uh, which I can use. So uh, is, is in a nutshell, um, offers all five of the above components and much more. And um, so uh, as a researcher, I find it uh, quite, uh, quite user friendly. It's really one stop portal. Um, everything is under one, one, one umbrella. So over to Emma and Dave uh, to explain you step by step how Artifact works and how you as uh, the BBA community can benefit from it, start using it right away. It has taken us more than a year um, to build this, this JBT on the RX and to populate all the articles and bring all the author community. And we are really pleased that it's already a huge success. So uh, that's, that's it to um, Emma and Dave. Great. Thank, thank you, Naseem. Um, before I let Emma kick us off, um, if you would pass the host service over to me so I can run the slides and the demo. So, yeah, while, while you guys are doing that. So I'm Emma and I'm the community uh, engagement director. And um, Nassim uh, covered the community element of things quite well. Um, you know, one of the big benefits of, of artifacts is that it, it can create these portals that automatically brings together authors in the same journal. Uh, but also it, it uh, is a way to make it easier to, for your work not only to be found, but for other interested parties to find you. Um, so, you know, my role is sort of both your point of contact for any suggestions that you have, any feedback, because that's extremely important to us. Uh, most of what we've done from 2.0 has been based on user feedback. Um, but also if there's anything that I can do to help facilitate conversations, um, whether it's running webinars or um, setting up meetups or anything like that, please, please do. Uh, let me know and get in touch because um, community is an absolutely huge part of what we, what we are about at Artifacts. Um, and just a quick uh, bit of housekeeping. Um, as Dave's talking, if you just want to drop any questions in the chat and then we'll, we'll bring them up at appropriate points um, when he's pausing. Um, and then, so just to quickly go over today's objectives. So we're going to give you a, a good orientation uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the dashboard, to the portal, uh, showing you how the dashboard is kept current and how uh, authors can contribute to that. Um, and just giving you a good demonstration of how you can really maximize uh, the value of this portal for your, for your works. Um, yeah, so over to you, Dave. Great, thank you, Emma. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Um, let's, uh, let's segue here, and I just have a, a couple of slides to, to sort of set the stage for those of you who may not yet be familiar with the artifact system. Uh, first, uh, I'll, I'll speak about why artifacts, and, and the, uh, the basic reasons are that the volume of, of research material, and this is across all disciplines, from STEM disciplines to you know, the social sciences, the arts and humanities, uh, the research output uh, grows by huge volumes daily, 90 gigabytes, 90 billion gigabytes by some estimates. Um, which is, which is wonderful. Uh, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of, there, there's tremendous amount of content, but what's not served well in the research ecosystem is that the vast bulk of, the vast bulk of that information, the vast bulk of the research output, and here I'm speaking of not just published literature, but the supporting evidence and artifacts, if you will, the research files that are produced the vast bulk of that research output is never indexed. And because it's not indexed or hasn't been indexed to date, authors, the creators, uh, struggle to gain recognition for their work because it can't be found, can't be discovered, can't be reused, and they can't be cited, they can't be credited for their contributions. In short, too much valuable research information remains hidden from view. So, what Artifacts does to address this is to first focus on helping authors and publishers get their work discovered and cited. And again, by their work, I'm referring to the broader portfolio of research outputs that are produced. 
many of which never culminate in a publication, right? Publishers, by and large, don't publish negative results. Most publishers don't systematically and comprehensively connect the evidence, the research work products that support the claims and assertions in their published articles with the supporting evidence. So what Artifacts does is it provides a secure and transparent mechanism for the registration and attribution of research. And we'll, we'll illustrate how we do that and with whom we do that. But simply put, what Artifacts does is it, allowed, it allows authors and the creators of research who may not ultimately publish, but still are producing valuable informational content in their discipline. It allows those creators of research to, to establish and maintain the provenance of all their work products, to share their research material openly and connect it with their publications, if and when they publish. And thirdly, to receive formal recognition of of their uh, research output at any time. The value to them and the value in turn to the publisher is that it helps the creators of research and the publishers boost the discovery, discoverability of, of their work products and increase their citation impact. So let's just take a, a quick look at this schematic, this illustration of how this works with the JBBA portal and the dashboard that we've provided. There are really three, uh, three contributing parties here, BBA and specifically JBBA, the journal, adds new publications as they are introduced uh, into their, uh, into their uh, content site. JBBA will also invite new authors to participate in this activity and, and use artifacts. And I should say up front that artifacts is free at the point of use uh, for, for uh, individual researchers, as Nassim pointed out. Author, uh, the author responsibility or activities here are to add their supporting evidence, the re their research data. There's no restriction on the type of file. Uh, there's no restriction on, uh, on the file formats. These could be data sets, it could be computer code, it could be protocols, it uh, could be experimental designs, documents of various types. Um, uh, uh, simulation outputs or, or research instrument device output files. Virtually any, any type of research work product is fair game. And what these authors do then is to link those files with the dashboard. They, so they add those files to the system or they add the metadata to the system. They link the research with the dashboard and they can do that, but they can do that uh, with the prior evidence once they've published, and if there's new evidence that's generated post-publication that relates to the publication, they can even add that. And what they're doing is essentially adding and enhancing the value of the publication itself. At the same time, they're making uh, their work more discoverable and all of these research files themselves that they've incorporated into uh, the system and, and associated with the dashboard become citable items so that they can receive a citation for a data set. They can receive a citation recognition for, uh, for some code that they've written. And then the third piece, uh, the third step in the process, what Artifacts does is it adds the author metadata. Uh, we add some author metadata we post records onto the Blocksburg blockchain. So what we're doing is establishing proof of existence for all, these, uh, all of these research work products, as well as citations. Uh, we update the dashboards uh, so, that the, so that the counters are, are accounting of uh, proofs of existence that are recorded on blockchain, as well as citations, are properly uh, accounted for and reported both in the JBBA dashboard and for the individual researchers. And lastly, we provide, uh, we provide support for authors to enable them to get maximum uh, value and utility from the system. So let me, why don't I, uh, rather than talk at these points, uh, I think it would probably be more effective if I were to share uh, 
and share the screen and uh, and walk through a bit of a a bit of a demonstration. So I, I typically like to start by looking at uh, by looking at the uh, the artifacts homepage, which I hope is still up on your screen. Yes. And um, we'll come back to this in a moment, but uh, but it, it's uh, it's easy to reach uh, from our homepage to sign up to artifacts or or to to log in uh, directly from uh, from here. So let me I'm going to actually log out. So you see the login process itself, because I think this is valuable in, in, in and of its own right. Um, it's important, and Nassim mentioned this as well, the, the integration and the synchronization that, that Artifacts has with various systems is designed to smooth and, and make workflows much more efficient. Uh, in, in, for logins, and this is, this is customarily the process, to be able to sign in with Google, to be able to sign in with LinkedIn uh, and those credentials. But we have not only the, the sign-in ability with, with ORCID, so you can use your ORCID credentials to sign in, but we have other synchronizations that, uh, that, that connect one's uh, ORCID profile with, with artifacts where both systems will benefit. And I'll talk about that uh, in a little, a little deeper into the demonstration. But as you can see here, of course, you can use email and, and password to log into the system. So when, when one logs in, um, you land, on, you land on the welcome page. And what you see on the welcome page are the primary navigation paths here in this left-hand panel uh, to view one's dashboard, to engage with uh, artifacts, workspaces, and, and to search the system. Across the top here, we see a set of, of public dashboards. And of course, today's session is going to focus uh, uh, primarily on the JBBA dashboard. And, and, and then below this what, this, what the welcome page displays are some recently added uh, artifacts to the system. And the way those artifacts come into the system are by individual researchers and authors and such that are adding their own work products to the system. And also artifacts itself is canvassing various, uh, uh, various digital resources and bringing current literature, both both published and unpublished works uh, into the system uh, for benefit uh, of those who, who are using artifacts. I think it's important at this point to, to, to highlight that we're not attempting to recreate a Google Scholar or a, a Web of Science um, or Scopus that, that, index, that index the vast history of published literature. What artifacts is focused on primarily are unpublished works of recent creation. We're a startup. We came into existence uh, in, uh, in late 2018. And our focus has been on, a laser focus has been on highlighting recently produced uh, research works, many of which are unpublished. And uh, as a result, they're not indexed. And they're very difficult to discover unless you happen to know the particular silo or resource uh, where, where these work products have in fact, uh, if in fact they've been posted, uh, can be found. So, so from here, let's, let's dive into the focus of today's discussion and, and, and take a look at the JBBA dashboard. Now from here, what we see is top line summary of proofs of existence and citations primarily. And I'll talk about these charts momentarily. Proofs of existence are the recording of the registration, if you will, of a file and its associated metadata, where what Artifacts does is it takes a digital fingerprint, creates a hash, and records a blockchain transaction onto the Blocksburg distributed ledger. Uh, now, for those of you not familiar with Blocksburg, it, was, uh, uh, it is a, a development that stems uh, uh, principally or initially from uh, the Max Planck Society, and Max Planck uh, not only founded the Blocksburg uh, Distributed Ledger, but now have a collaboration uh, and a consortium that consists of some 40 institutions, research institutions globally, that support that, uh, that blockchain infrastructure. It in fact has become the blockchain for science, 
And what's valuable for artifacts is that we and our user community, uh, including JBBA authors and JBBA itself, is able to rely on a distributed ledger that's operated, whose nodes are operated by trusted institutions. It's not, it's not an artifact startup that's built a blockchain. We are relying on a, on a very widely distributed uh, and institutionally supported blockchain to record these transactions. For citations, what we capture here are really two, two inputs uh, that contribute to total citations. What we do is, although we're not attempting to recreate the historical index uh, that Google Scholar has, for example, we do harvest citation data from, these, from various resources. So there is that look back to the published literature to uh, identify uh, citations. But importantly, and what's unique about artifacts is that the system allows citations to be given and received in these unpublished works. So that's what we're that's what we're tracking. That's what we're tracking. Here. As you can see, it's always possible to return uh, uh, to the uh, to the JBBA uh, website. And what we do with the data that that JBBA provides and the authors provide is we generate these visuals, these visual displays. In terms of article category, uh, these various article categories, uh, you know, well, let's just look on peer reviewed. So to date, 25 peer reviewed published works, let's just take a, a gander in on one of those and you can see how that record is, is viewed, uh, viewable and displayed here in artifacts. It's possible to see the full journal information associated with that article, but What's unique about artifacts with respect to this article is that again, we've recorded a proof of existence re registration onto, onto the Blocksburg uh, blockchain. And that's, that's the summary hash link uh, that uh, is associated with it. For those of you who, who are of a mind to understand and wish to delve further into what Blocksburg is and what it does, uh, you, can, you can find your way through to this link and the hash and the metadata that have been hashed within this string associated with this, with this article here. Uh, let me go. And so these charts are, are what artifacts is generating. And, and these are, these, these are it should be familiar charts to, to everyone, displays by article category, case study, essay, analysis, commentary, and so forth, geographic distribution. There have been 21 uh, publications with authors affiliated with over the UK and so forth, keywords, blockchain, ICO, DLT, Bitcoin, et cetera. Those are, um, those are familiar, as I, as I say, but what is entirely unique about artifacts is our ability, and here's where the author collaboration is an important part of this, with author assistance and participation, we're able to generate, we will be able to generate and make this chart live, where what this chart will display will be, let me see if I can get the screen shifted so it's more visible, what this chart will be able to, to display are the supporting artifacts that authors have affiliated with their publications in JBBA. So in this case, the color coding, um, we have data sets, we have computer code, we have audio visual, we have research instruments. Now this chart at the moment is a mock-up. It's intended to entice authors to participate. And once authors associate their data sets, their code, any other types of artifact types, any type, any other types of research outputs with their article, um, we're able to generate this chart live. And the value for those researchers is again, these items become discoverable and they become citable. So now in this case, author last name Dyson uh, that we've mocked up here with uh, if you will, 22 data sets associated with Dyson's uh, publications. Um, Dyson, those, those data sets can receive citation recognition 
from anyone uh, using the system. And those citations are accumulated in Dyson's personal dashboard, of citations received. They're also accumulated and reported um, here with citations received to the JBVA dashboard. So the magic of the magic of, of artifacts really is it really is twofold. One of which is the, the the proof of existence registration and chaining together of provenance uh, of work, as well as the uh, enabling the discoverability and the citation of supporting supporting works. So why don't I? I think it'd be time efficient. Why don't I? I'm going to run a, a brief three minute video and, and, and give the talk track to it for authors. So authors viewing this video will be keenly interested to understand, well, okay, um, I understand the value, I, 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 I see the benefits. What do I as an author, what do I as a JBVA author need to do? What are the steps I, I should take here in using artifacts to accomplish this? Well, first, uh, there are really three, three principal steps. The first is to add your files and, uh, and any metadata associated with those files that, that you choose to, um, that we take a digital fingerprint of and, and, and record proof of existence for your work products. Uh, secondly, um, uh, well, in addition uh, to, to adding uh, your, uh, secondly, you would add your metadata. And thirdly, the third step is really to associate that artifact or that research file with a JBBA dashboard. And once that has happened, what Artifacts does is it, it will update that view in the dashboard, um, but it exposes those works uh, to be discovered and to be cited. So let me just show, let me just show this brief video and talk through this as we proceed. I'm gonna back up, I'm gonna open this up so you see a full screen. Okay, so what the author does, uh, let's say, let's say I, I, I have published, let's say Emma and I have published uh, a, an article uh, in JBBA, and we would have previously- David, uh, David, there's a question from uh, no when the JBBA community and authors, I think you're going to show us in a second, isn't it? Uh, yes, the, the question is, it, it, where is the JBBA community? If, where can I find the JBBA community and authors? Yes, okay, I'll, I'll, that's a great question. I'll show that momentarily. So what an, uh, what an author would, uh, what Emma and I would do, uh, let's say we had, uh, let's say we had a, a, a graphic uh, or a chart of some sort that we wanted to affiliate with, uh, we wanted to associate with our article. So we would come to artifacts on the left-hand navigation panel, we would click on create an artifact and we would drag and drop or browse to pull that file into artifacts. We then add some metadata. So you can see the, the in this case, the file title is article, but, but we're going to label it as a chart. We give it a title, the asterisk fields are the required fields. It's important to specify public here because what the value is to the author of doing this is that that exposes this research work uh, to be discovered and cited. We'll come back to adding authors, any co-authors. So if I were John Abbott and I wanted to add Emma uh, to this work, we'll come back to where I, would, uh, where I would add Emma. As you can see, the type was specified as a graph and chart and a creation date is, is specified. Now these are the only required metadata fields. It's possible uh, to add uh, various other information, uh, various other content information to this record, uh, but that's all optional. It could be an abstract associated with this work, a further description, keywords associated uh, with, this, uh, with this file. And as you'll see in this view, uh, it's possible to uh, add, uh, edit, uh, add, delete, and, and modify keywords. Again, the value of which is it makes this particular 
work file uh, uh, more easily discovered, right? Uh, choose a language uh, from a pick list that uh, any of the content in the file is. Provide a URL, uh, should one exist, uh, for example, on your Google Drive. Uh, provide a DOI if, uh, if one has been generated uh, for this. And information, should this be an item that uh, actually has a formal publisher, uh, then that publisher information could be included as well. So these down below here are all optional metadata fields. So what we're doing again is we're adding this file uh, to our own account. We're, we're adding this to our, to our own personal uh, account in, uh, in Artifacts. We're going to review it for accuracy and then we're going to create or confirm. And now what that has done is that has, uh, that has uh, recorded an immutable record onto the Blocksburg blockchain. Uh, as I showed you earlier, it's possible then to uh, click through to see the hash and go through the block to, to Blocksburg to see that. So that's the first part of what the author does. And, and so if Emma and I were, um, were, were creators of, of this, uh, that's how we would add our, our, our graphic uh, to, the, uh, to the system. Now let's show associating this with the JBBA uh, works, workspace. And this will get to, this will in part get to a question that was uh, asked just, just a moment ago. Uh, David, there is a question from uh, uh, Professor Pilton. Uh, um, he says, you have explained that Artifacts is not a new Google Scholar Scopus or Web of Science that primarily focus published work. Is there any reference to mention SRN, which contains a lot of unpublished work, uh, white papers and so on, yet conditional on the author's decision to upload their own works on top? I actually feel much more comfortable with the artifacts vision and its blockchain based proof of research existence. Yeah. Unlike yeah. SSRN, which is more difficult to follow and trust as far as the reliability of unpublished works are concerned? Yes, that, that's great, great question. And SSRN is, is, is one of many prized uh, information repositories uh, for, for scholars, particularly in, in, in the social sciences. It's a great example, it's a great illustration uh, uh, to speak to because, because the social sciences are, are, are disciplines that um, generally are much more open in sharing uh, their, their, their uh, in-process papers, uh, much more open in sharing uh, data and information prior to publication. And as we all know, in, in the publishing world, there are many publications that will not accept for publication work that has been previously exposed. So the, the way I would, the, what I would say about SSRN and artifacts is that Artifacts views SSRN as one of the many information pools that we reach into to obtain what's accessible, what's available to us to pull into our system that's current and unpublished. Um, to your point, Nassim, uh, SSRN um, gates some of that information. Uh, and so we're only able to uh, access and, and and display for benefit of all of our users, the data that it, that it exposes to us. Um, the difference with artifacts is that our, all artifacts users, the individuals are in a position to determine for themselves when and with whom to share their research works, their files. Um, Emma and I, the, 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 the group of us on this call, for example, could decide on, in our work team we're not going to share this and we're not going to expose this information to anyone outside our work team. Uh, or we're going to selectively expose some of our research uh, works broadly, publicly, or all of it. So we, we have, you know, we have everything from locked it down tight private uh, support all the way to a broad open public. Um, but I would, but I would say the contrasting difference is that we put the full entire control over those decisions into the hands of the individual researcher. If that addresses the question, I hope. 
So, so here, now let's come back to this, the, really the, the last part of what uh, the, the authors need to do after they've added their uh, work products to the system is they want to affiliate them with, with the JBBA uh, workspace. And that workspace is public. The JBBA workspace is public. So if, uh, if any of you, um, for those of you who have registered with artifacts, you will be able to find the JBBA workspace in, uh, as a public workspace uh, through this uh, tab in the left-hand navigation. And if you've not registered, please do. And, and that, will be, that will be available to you because this is public. So what does the process look like for the author to link their work? Well, they go into the workspace, they click on the useful materials tab, they click on add new, and then they search. And they look for, they look for the, their works that they wish to add. Now in this, clay, in this case, you've seen that the user added, if you recall the title that was given to that original uh, uh, artifact that Emma and I added, it was titled article four purpose of this demonstration is, oh, they clicked, oh, they clicked on article three, two. Well, they don't really want, that was by mistake. They, they, they don't want that associated with the uh, article and the dashboard in JBBA, but article four is. And that's the process. Let me pause that. Sorry about that. Let me escape here. And ah, so let me let me come back. Let's come back here. So so again, the question earlier was asked: uh, workspaces. Where do I find? Where do I find find the uh, the JBBA uh, workspace? Sorry, and it's in my list of, of public workspaces. My I in my list here. Let me actually back up. I have in my list of workspaces. I have private workspaces. I'm working on. Uh, with uh, with other groups and public workspaces, in this case, JBBA. And where one sees the authors, because I think the members of this community, if you will, that was one of the questions, is uh, by opening up this workspace, which again is public, um, we can view the authors here. This is a subset, you can see there are, there are a total of 34 here. I'll just open up that broader community so you can see the entire community uh, of, of authors that are, that are currently affiliated with, uh, with this workspace. And the way an author becomes affiliated with this workspace is, is uh, JBBA is managing it. So JBBA's role here is to add newly published works in terms of these we call useful materials here. So adding those newly published works here. And upon adding those newly published works, if there are new authors associated with those works, to add them here in this fashion. So for example, if I wanted, uh, let's say I wanted to add, just do this. I wanted to add Emma Boswood because she had authored uh, a paper. Again, I'm playing the role of JBBA here. Um, Emma appears here because she's registered in the system. If she hadn't registered, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but since Emma has previously registered, I have the ability to specify her permissions to give her administrator rights over this probably not, she's just an author. Um, the administrators are JBBA, but I could give a read-write capability or, or read-only capability. And also importantly, we've implemented the credit taxonomy that defines contributor roles. So what you see here is a set of, what's become a standard set of contributor roles that many publishers ar around uh, the, uh, the, the, the um, academic publishing world uh, uh, have employed uh, to define the roles of the authors. And it's possible to choose multiple roles. So it could be that for that particular work, uh, Emma res was responsible for the methodology and the validation of that. 
Now those roles stay with her and this artifact. Now I'm not going to, well, I can't accept that this way, but it's also easy to, to delete uh, and save. Um, if an author, if I, want, if I wish to add an author and I search for them and they in fact aren't, they don't appear here, as long as I know their email, I can invite them uh, to the workspace by adding their email, their name, and, and sending and having the system send an invitation email to them. Uh, Dave, just while you've paused for a sec there, we've got another question mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Noor Nurani uh, asking, will my articles be automatically extracted from ORCID or SSRN or Google Scholar when I sign up or do I have to do it manually? Ah, great, great question. So let's, uh, so, they, they, I'll show you how they can auto, automatically, or I like to use the word automagically, uh, be incorporated from ORCID. We have, we do not yet have um, the plugins uh, for, um, for Google Scholar. Um, Google Scholar is, um, uh, it, Google Scholar is a challenge to work with uh, on many levels. Um, because as, you, as many of you, if, if you've tried um, to actually run inquiries on any, on any you know, larger scale uh, and import records, download records, uh, those, those, they are typically gated. Um, but we'd be happy to collaborate with you, through you and, and with you uh, to achieve that implementation. But let me show you how this, um, where, the, where this appears uh, with, with, uh, with ORCID. Uh, so here we're, I'll, I'll just show my, my sample profile. And when you, when you register into, uh, when you first register or sign up for artifacts, um, you, will have a, you will see a screen similar to this and you have the ability to opt in to integration with ORCID uh, and, with, uh, and with LinkedIn. And you have the op opportunity to uh, select synchronize or synchronization with ORCID. Once you've, once you've done that, then, since you have an ORCID ID and you have a works record or set of records uh, in your ORCID works uh, file of the, uh, the number of, uh, of, of publications, patents, any other work products that you represent, you've represented in your ORCID works file, by adopting, by clicking on synchronization here, what that sets up is an automatic synchronization so that artifacts learns of all of those works as you uh, as you first uh, have uh, uh, synchronized it updates artifacts updates as new works come in to uh, orchid similarly actually let me pause there for a moment um, as those works are now the metadata of those works are reflected in artifacts um, you are able then to establish and record a proof of existence for all of those works merely by associating the files for those metadata records with those works. And then what artifacts will do is, is record a proof of existence transaction. So that's, that's the data coming from ORCID uh, into, into artifacts. But this is full synchronization. So the other side, it's a two-way uh, street where as you continue to use artifacts and, uh, and new files uh, and, and new works are added into your artifacts system, if you've chosen synchronization, those works will automatically update your ORCID works record. So they stay, uh, they stay perfectly and, and seamlessly in, in sync uh, in, in the background. I hope that answers your question. Now let me um, just quickly, maybe one just one last view here and, and then take any remaining questions. Um, I've shown uh, the, uh, the JBBA uh, dashboard here. Um, I have various other dashboards, or, or excuse me, the uh, workspace uh, that, that I'm working on with various parties or they are, they are public uh, and, uh, and such. Um, it's possible to on the fly create your own workspace. Um, and it's as easy as, you know, ent entering a title for it. Uh, the default for any new workspace is private. So we want to protect privacy. We want to ensure that 
when, when users decide to share information, it's a conscious act, um, but it's easy, it, making it public is as easy as, as clicking here. Um, the creator of that workspace is the, uh, is the definitive first author. Um, and, then, um, and then whether there's a description you want to add or keywords to add, uh, that's, that's at your option. And then the way in which uh, other, uh, other authors are added uh, would be, let me just pull up one of mine. The way other authors could be added uh, to this workspace is again by going to a manage authors the manage authors tab in the workspace itself and adding them as I as I showed you in, in the example with Emma. One last item uh, to to highlight is the ability to, to give in, to give citations, and uh, because that's an important differentiator uh, for uh, for artifacts. Uh, from this workspace, it's possible, and as you see, this is an example where from the workspace that uh, Jason Rollins, my my uh, co-author here, and I are working in this in this project, um, we've given attribution to a number of other parties, some of which are work, work products of our own, some of which are work products of, of others. Um, these, these attributions do register and record a proof of, uh, a proof of citation uh, registration onto Blocksburg. And when, uh, when Jason and or I in this workspace give a citation, it's recorded as a citation given by us and to the party uh, receiving it, it's recorded as a received citation. So just as you see citations appearing in, uh, in Web of Science or just as you see citations appearing in Google Scholar, um, what we're doing is allowing citations to be given and recording of those uh, given and received or reported by artifacts. A distinguishing, distinguishing difference is that in citations, we are able, uh, we enable the users to also add their reason or rationale for giving a citation. So customarily today, conventionally, if Emma and I write a paper and we were to cite works of any of you on this call today, um, and in our paper were published in JBBA, um, without artifacts, um, although JBBA is indexed uh, by, by these indexes, you would see a citation uh, increase. Uh, you would see your citation count increase. You wouldn't know why. And so Artifacts is very much a believer in adding contextual relevance and intelligence to citations. And again, that's information, that's a process and, and, and value that is unique to the Artifacts service and is indelibly included and recorded in, uh, in the transactions that we record uh, onto the blockchain. So with that, let me, let me pause and, um, and ask, uh, ask Emma or N Nassim if there are any other questions that have, been, uh, that have been posted that we should address, or if this is a, uh, a good time to, uh, to wrap, wrap up. Uh, so there are no more um, questions in the chat currently, um, but if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and ask. Solomon? Do you have any questions? Uh, um, uh, no, no. Um, uh, thank you for that. I have got any question. Right. Alexander, anything you want to clarify? I have just one question. <laughs> How to join to this network right now to try it? Uh, okay, so let me tell you that is a great that that is the that's the first that's the first starting point. Let me drop into let me see. Oh, so I've put into the chat all of our content contact links that I'm I'm going to show on this slide here. So let me go back to screen sharing. Uh, let me make sure that this actually uh, that that actually posted. Can you see in chat the links, uh, Emma, that I dropped in? Uh, not yet, Dave. There. Nothing's that, come through in the group chat. There you go. There it is. Yeah. Okay. There's a whole bunch of links. So now let me. So um, it is. It will be as easy. How you sign up for this is as easy as going to the Artifacts website, artifacts.ai. That takes you to our website, and I'll bring that back up so you can see it. 
So the website here. And clicking on sign up. And that will take you to a sign up page where um, you can uh, use you know, pre existing credentials, uh, whether they're ORCID, um, uh, Google, LinkedIn, or, or just a, uh, an email password ID. So that will get you, uh, that, will, that will grant you access. You'll get a confirmation email from the artifact system. And, uh, and then um, once you log in, you will be able to see, among others, you'll certainly be able to see the JBBA uh, workspace. You will be able to see the JBBA dashboard uh, on that welcome screen that I, that I showed earlier. I should also mention that um, as a matter of convenience for any, for any registered user, so for example, authors who want to add uh, their, uh, some of their data files uh, to the system, uh, you can always, as a convenience, drag and drop those data files uh, into, this, uh, into this space from our homepage. And um, you'll add the bit of metadata. Primarily, the, the principal one to add is, is an email that identifies yourself. And is, as long as that's the same email that you've registered uh, using, uh, that you've used to register into Artifacts, um, Artifacts will, uh, will capture that information uh, and at any later point, you can then affiliate that file or, or multiple files that you uh, that you've added. You can affiliate those files with your uh, publication in JBBA. So this is a, a matter of convenience. It's, it's, it literally is as easy as the process I showed you earlier, where you drag and drop the file, you add a bit of metadata, uh, and and then in Artifacts link it with uh, the, the JBBA dashboard. Any other questions? There is, there's one from, from Dr. Solomon and he's asking, is the artist free? I may have missed this bit of information. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the first part of that. Is artifacts free? Oh, is artifacts free? Great question. So, um, yes, um, uh, artifacts uh, is free. For the for the individual researcher, and and small research teams, uh, small groups of researchers, our business model is uh, is one where we we license subscription service to laboratories, uh, to departments, uh, to uh, if you will colleges or universities um, or publishers uh, and such, uh, and that's and 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 that business model is an annual, it's an annual subscription license fee. Um, very affordable, um, but there's, there's nothing more affordable for the individual researcher than free. So it is, it is free uh, for the individual. Yes, it's a great question. Thanks for asking. Okay, there aren't currently any more questions in the chat, but... Um, the, sorry, the drag and drop, you don't need to... Uh, uh, log in. So just use your file, and then the next time you you log in, it will show in your, in your records. Yeah. That that's right. So I'll, I'll show. Right. I can I, I can show I can show the first part of this. Let me bring up my let me bring up my finder. Um, let me just find a. Oh, here's a here here's a file. So let me just illustrate this here. So in this case, it's a it's a screen grab. It's a file. Could be anything. It's a PNG file. All I need to do here is is add my email address, um, and I would want to use the email address that I have used when registering with Artifacts. Um, but I add my email address. That's the only required field. Um, it's possible for me to add keywords. It's possible for me to add other metadata at this stage. But if all I want to do is to throw a file into the system and come back to it later to associate it uh, with uh, the JBBA uh, workspace and dashboard, I can do that later. And I just click on, I'm, you know, I'm not a robot and I transact this. And that would, that would put this, uh, 
uh, the, in, the metadata information about this file uh, into my artifacts account. It's as easy as that. Okay. Very good. I have one more question that I'm typing right now. I can read it. Uh, with so many options today that to log in on various uh, platforms, so you can use your Orchid, LinkedIn, Google uh, credentials, which means, I mean, I'm, not, I'm no expert here, but uh, it seems to me that our credentials are being stored somewhere, not just on our personal uh, laptops, but also in, the, in cyberspace somewhere. The question is actually, does this multiplication of login uh, options or paths, does it increase the risk of uh, cyber attacks? Uh, you know, the identity theft or, you know, uh, uh, people stealing our personal information. Um, well, that, that is a, that is a, a, a broad and, and complex topic to be, to be sure. Um, does that, does this increase risk? Um, the uh, what I have to say from from the from the artifacts perspective that uh, twofold uh, you know we we deploy you know contemporary technologies to secure the privacy of of every participant of every of every user um, uh, and such um, we've not experienced any issues um, but everyone everyone in the digital arena uh, there is a degree of risk um, so there, there's no question that the moment you, that you you're participating digitally um, is is the moment that there's some element of risk I, I'm not the best uh, I, I, I'm not I, I'm, I don't have the expertise to specifically address the nuances of your question um, I, I think it's something that uh, that the community generally is is concerned about. Um, having said that, um, our, our view that we've learned from speaking with researchers, uh, and, and my entire career has has been has been in this is in this field, is that scientific and scholarly research across all disciplines is historically speaking. Um, perhaps the oldest self-reinforcing, self-reinforced system where evidence is brought forward, eventually it's shared. Um, sometimes it's not shared until publication um, and such, but where, where, where claims and, and, and assertions and data are shared and it's the community that serves as the arbiter. Now I'm, I'm sort of getting off topic of of identity theft and so forth, um, because I think that's that's always sort of a, a, a background a background concern. Um, but but we're a, a, a big believer in um, in the open in enabling the creators of research to make their information um, open and accessible at a time and place of their choosing, uh, and we encourage that to accelerate science and, um, and, and discovery and, and ultimately the, the benefits that accrue to society. There's always gonna be some leakage and some risk there, but I'd have to defer to other experts. Dave, there is one question that uh, I was talking to a researcher and uh, he asked, um, is this proof of existence on a public chain uh, and can, anybody sees this proof of existence and verify uh yes so when i yes it is so so blocksburg uh, blocksburg is an accessible is is accessible publicly both through a blocksburg interface um and when uh, in in the example i showed uh, earlier in the demonstration by by clicking on the um the confirmation of the blockchain registration uh, that takes us to a, a Blocksburg screen that displays uh, displays the 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 hash recording that artifacts transacted under Blocksburg. So yes, it is public. Yes, it is accessible. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I think if we have no more questions, we can 
conclude the session. Uh, Dave, any uh, last final comments? Uh, only to say, well, first, thank, thank you, Nassim uh, and, uh, and, and BBA for, uh, for sponsoring this, uh, this webinar. Thank all of you for, for attending, Emma, for, uh, for, for, for your assistance uh, here along the way. And I would just encourage uh, everyone to, um, certainly all authors uh, and anyone engaged in, uh, in, in research uh, of, of, of their own in any discipline, um, to sign up to Artifacts, uh, to give it a try, to let us know what you think. Uh, feel free to, to contact um, uh, Emma or myself um, here uh, from these emails. And um, we, uh, we would love to hear what, what you all think and your additional suggestions and recommendations for how we ought to uh, continue developing Artifacts uh, to meet your needs and, and requirements. So. Uh, Again, thank you very much. We'll look forward uh, to, to hearing from all of you. Oh, Dave, th thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks, okay. everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.